everyone and welcome to this evening's digital broadcast. We extend a warm welcome to our first-time viewers. You can visit us at newarkupc.info and while there you can sign up to join a small group. There's also a kids hub. We are continuing the series on the parables and this evening Sister Debbie would be speaking to us on the parable of the sower. Over to you now, Sister Debbie. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for taking time out of your weekend to join us here at Newark UPC. We're spending two weeks on the parables of Jesus, and I'm excited to talk about one of my favorite subjects, gardening. Well, not really. <laughs> I'll be speaking on the parable of the sower and how we can apply these concepts to our lives. But before we get started, let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing us together once again to study your word. Help us to apply your principles to our lives and draw us closer to you. Allow your spirit to lead and guide each one of us. We thank you for your presence here tonight with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I do love to work in the garden, especially this time of year. I find it very therapeutic to see God at work in his amazing creation. The flowers, the fruits, and vegetables are all so intricate and unique. And watching the leaves develop on trees fascinates me, with each variety having its own design. And it's at this time of year that I have this overwhelming desire to plant. Annuals, perennials, trees, seeds, anything that will grow. But first, I always check my soil to see if it's ready for planting. And I add compost and fertilizer. The condition of my ground matters. And once the ground is prepared, then I'm ready to plant. And of course, that's only the beginning. Then the garden must be watered and mulched and weeded and the objective for this whole process is to produce a harvest. So let's turn to the parable of the sower and see how gardening concepts apply and how they don't apply. <laughs> so this parable is divided up into three parts. Part number one is the actual parable, the story of the farmer sowing seed in his field. And in part two, Jesus answers the disciples' question why are you speaking in parables? And in part number three, which I really like, Jesus gives the explanation to his disciples so that they will understand. So let's begin in Matthew chapter 13, verses one through nine, and I'll be using the New Living Translation. So this is the parable of the sower, or it's sometimes called the parable of the farmer scattering seed. So uh, in verse one, Later that same day, Jesus left the house and sat beside the lake. 
A large crowd soon gathered around him, so he got in a boat. Then he sat there and taught as the people stood on the shore. He told many stories in the, farm, in the form of parables, such as this one. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plants soon wilted under the hot sun, and since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell among the thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as was planted. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. So for me, this parable brings to my mind the image of a field with different ground conditions. It's not uniform like many fields that we see on farms around here. I see it more like the farms from the mountains of Virginia, where the farmers had to be creative about how to use their farmland because it was cut out of steep hillsides and it had outcroppings of rock. So there were lots of different conditions in the same field. As the farmer broadcasts his seed, it falls on all areas of this field. The footpath is packed down it doesn't allow the seeds to embed in the soil. And then along come the hungry birds and devour them. And some areas of the field have shallow soil. It lays on top of solid rock. And the seed quickly germinates and begins to grow. But the roots are unable to sink down deep. Then the plants wither and die in the hot sun. Some seed falls on the ground that's receptive for growth. There are also thorns growing that steal the nutrients and choke out the new plants. And then the last kind is the good fertile ground where the seed can thrive and sink down deep roots. These plants produce an abundant harvest. It's interesting that it describes four types of ground in this farmer's field. It's very applicable to the people of an agrarian society. They understand sowing and harvesting. But what does it have to do with people? And why is Jesus telling it? That's exactly the question the disciples posed to Jesus in Matthew chapter 13, verses 7, 10, 10 through 17. His disciples came and asked him, why do you use parables when you talk to people? He replied, you're permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. That's an interesting concept. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given and they will have an abundance of knowledge. But for those who are not listening, there's a problem. For those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. That is why I use parables. For they look, but they don't really see. They hear, but they don't really listen or understand. This fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah that says, and this is Isaiah 6, 9, from Isaiah 6, 9 and 10. When you hear what I say, you will not understand. When you see what I do, you will not comprehend. So, okay, why is this? For the hearts of the people are hardened and their ears can't hear. They have closed their eyes so their eyes cannot see and their ears cannot hear and their hearts cannot understand and they cannot turn to me and let me heal them so sad. So now verse 16, but blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. I tell you the truth. 
Many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see, but they didn't see it. And they longed to hear what you hear, but they didn't hear it. So Jesus is saying that unless a person has a desire to understand the meaning of his words, unless they have a tender heart, one that's not hardened toward him, the true meaning of his parable will not register in their minds. It will be snatched away or have no root or just be crowded out. Jesus goes on to give an explanation to his disciples concerning the true meaning of this parable of the sower. So he says in Matthew 13, verses 18 through 23, now listen to the explanation of the parable about the farmer planting seeds. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and don't understand it. Then the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. So the people here on the footpath represent a type of ground. The KJV says, by the wayside. They hear God's message, but they don't understand it. It's snatched away by the evil one. It never gets planted, really. It never even starts to grow. And then verse 20, the seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. And this type makes me think about Jesus's question in Luke 14, 28, about counting the cost before beginning to build a tower. We have to give thought to what we're doing. So in verse 28, but don't begin until you count the cost for who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there's enough money to finish it. It comes back to actually hearing and giving thought to God's word in order to become firmly rooted. This is not something to take lightly. And then in Matthew 13, 22, the seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear God's word but all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the lure of wealth, so no fruit is produced. This reminds me of the discipleship lesson from level two. Uh, there are several lessons on enemies of your soul. We can't allow thorns of this life to choke out God's word and make us unfruitful. We have to weed our lives of things that hinder our walk with God. And we're instructed to give our worries and cares to God. And then in verse 22, we read of good soil. The seed that fell on good soil represents those who hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even a hundred times as much as has been planted. So Jesus describes three situations where people who in the end do not receive his word. Only the fourth situation represents those who understand, take the word into their receptive hearts and bear much fruit. Dear God, let us be among this fourth group of people. So how can we apply this parable of the sower to our lives it's not just a nice story that Jesus told. Let's look at this parable from two perspectives. We can compare ourselves to the ground receiving seed, and we can also compare ourselves to the sower. So first, we can ask ourselves some questions like, what kind of ground am I? Can my soil be improved? Like when planting a garden, the gardener does whatever makes the plot conducive to good growth. It's not profitable to skip this step. What can we do in our lives to prepare our hearts to be sensitive to God's prompting? 
we can ask ourselves, have I developed the healthy habits um, of the effective disciples that we discussed in our small groups last term? Do I spend time in the word and in prayer? How about fasting and gathering together and giving and seeking contentment? Am I rooted and grounded so that I'm able to grow and produce fruit? Things like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And remember that the little things matter to God. Remember the principle that Jesus states in Luke 16, 10. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. So when unsure about big decisions in your life, just do the next small thing that you are sure of and allow God to lead you further. You can ask yourself, do I desire to grow? I've heard it said, and I tend to agree, that there's no standing still in our relationship with God. A person is either going forward or backward, but not standing still. Another question we can ask ourselves, do I strive to be salt and light to those around me, or do I just try to blend in? In addition to considering what kind of ground we are, we can also look at this parable of the sower from the perspective of the farmer, the one who is sowing the seed. Now, God is the one who truly knows the soil type. Why did the sower broadcast the seed on seemingly all types of soil? That little word, all, is very important. We've seen big, healthy trees and plants that sometimes grow out of what looks like solid rock. Sometimes growing conditions are disguised. Last summer, I had a volunteer tomato plant that came up in dense um, ground cover, but it thrived and produced a lot of tomatoes. I would never have expected it. We don't know what's underneath the surface. Only God truly knows the good ground. So in thinking about our church mission statement, all making disciples of all, we can't make the determination of who will receive the good seed, the word of God. In addition, once it's sown, we can't make it grow. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 through 9, Paul says, I planted the seeds in your heart, and Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. It's not important who does the planting or who does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. The one who plants and the one who waters work together with the same purpose, and both will be rewarded for their own hard work. For we are both God's workers, and you are God's field, you are God's building. The parable of the sower gives us much insight into God's plan for us to receive and spread his word. And it emphasizes the need to be intentional in our relationship with God and our relationship with those around us. But we must have ears to hear. We are such a blessed people. God desires that we live an abundant life and bear much fruit according to his plan. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, our lives belong to you. Thank you for your saving grace that you've made available to all of us. And thank you for allowing your word to take root in our hearts, allowing us to grow in you. Let us be salt and light in this world. Let us be effective farmers in sowing your seed wherever we go. 
and now be with each one of us who has joined us this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank you so much for being with us this evening. We'll be here again tomorrow night at the same time. We uh, have messages Tuesday through Saturday so uh, at seven o'clock, so join us again. Good night. Thank you, Sister Debbie, for this evening's teaching. Let us be encouraged that we can be rooted and grounded in the Word of God, which is comparable to good soil. By doing so, we can bring forth abundant good fruit. Thank you for viewing with us this evening. And remember, visit us at NorcUPC.info where you can sign up to join a small group. You can submit a praise report or a prayer request. You can even sign up for water baptism or partner with us in giving. And for the children, they can join by Zoom on Sundays. Thank you again. Have a wonderful evening. God bless. Bye.